as he didn't lack for scholarship offers, Donovan McNabb could have gone to a lot of schools, but only Nebraska and Syracuse told him that yes, he was a quarterback, and that would be his position. Thus, for the kid from Chicago, it came down to the Cornhuskers or the Orangemen, the Orangemen or the Cornhuskers. And McNabb, who'd arrive on campus as a 17-year-old, decided to head east, where he would become the greatest quarterback in SU history. He started for four seasons beginning in 1995. He won 35 games. He threw or ran for 96 touchdowns. He led his club to four bowl games, the Gator, the Liberty, the Fiesta, and the Orange. He directed SU to four finishes in the AP's final top 25 polls. And for all of that, he was named the Big East Conference's Offensive Player of the Decade. How good was this guy? Good enough to turn on a town. Because in McNabb's final 20 home games, the Carrier Dome saw 10 crowds of 49,000 or more, three others of 48,000 or more, and two others of 47,000 or more. So Donovan won, and Donovan wowed. And he'd do more of the same in Philadelphia, where he led the NFL's Eagles to five NFC title fairs and to one Super Bowl, and became the highest paid football player of all time, at the time, with a $115 million contract signed in 2001, or just seven and a half years after choosing Paul Pascaloni's Orangeman over Tom Osborne's Cornhuskers. He beat Virginia Tech in the Dome on that celebrated throwback to Stephen Brominski at the final horn. Heck, he even beat Georgetown in basketball, scoring 10 points off the bench in SU's 77-74 win at the Dome in 97. Nebraska's loss, Donovan McNabb was, Syracuse's game. A grateful Orn nation still smiles.